AP Calc this is welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. Uh, we are working again from the calculus book uh, from Finney to Manowaits Kennedy, third edition, and uh, we'll be pulling some problems from that book today. We are working on implicit differentiation. This is the first time we've talked about this topic. And uh, just to give you a little heads up, basically implicit differentiation or in other words, doing the derivative, it's kind of an implied derivative, and the idea is you're starting out with a function, uh, an equation that, that's, that's not necessarily solved for y, uh, or it's not solved for f of x, or it's not solved for v, or whatever it is, whatever the variable of interest is, and uh, we're going to do the derivative anyway. So the idea is uh, if we started out with something like, uh, let's say, uh, y squared equals x plus 4, and we wanted to know the derivative of this, usually what they're going to ask for is dy dx. Okay? Well, one way to approach this would be to actually solve this thing for y. Now, we have a little bit of an issue because of the, um, you know, the squared and square rooting and things like that, but keep in mind the goal is dy dx. All right, so if, if I take the square root of, of both sides of this thing, what I end up with is uh, the absolute value of y equals the square root of x plus 4, and usually the way we handle that is uh, y equals plus or minus, positive or negative, x plus 4. Now, I haven't done any derivative yet. All I've done is uh, rewrite this in a different form. And in fact, I'm going to rewrite this in yet another form so that I can use power rule and chain rule to do this. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to have this positive or negative kind of come along for the ride. Y prime, as you know, is basically just multiplied by the exponent. Okay, and then we're going to keep the inside the same. The power rule would say we would subtract 1 from that exponent, so this is going to be negative 1 half. And then we have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Well, nice enough, the derivative of the inside of this thing is 1. This is the derivative. Now, shocked, well, you probably won't be shocked to know that this is not how uh, most textbooks or multiple choice questions would leave it. Um, so this, the one over here is not really doing anything. Uh, this is really a square root in the denominator. And there's a 2 in the denominator because of the 1 half. And there's a plus or minus 1. And, and this would be fabulous. Okay, well, I want to offer another thought. So we're going to go back to the original. And again, what we're doing is dy dx. Now, what we just did a second ago was actually nothing new. I know it looked ugly, but it's nothing new. Well, what we're going to do now is do the same derivative, only we're going to do it implicitly. Okay, so here's the deal. I know how to do the derivative of x squared. Well, the derivative of y squared is the same idea. It's 2y to the 1. The only catch is I'm supposed to be doing the derivative with respect to x. So what I'm going to do is multiply this by dy dx. Technically, what I just did was a little chain rule kind of thing. So I did the derivative of y squared with respect to y times dy dx, in effect, that symbolizes the derivative of y squared with respect to x by mu just multiplying by dy dx. Okay? On the right side of this equation, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 4 is 0. <clears throat> this is basically done. It's just I don't have dy dx solved for. And I know you're looking at it like, really? That's it? Yeah, really, that's it. And we just need to solve for dy dx. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2y. So this becomes dy dx equals 1 over 2y. And this is done. Now, the only question is, how can that possibly be the same thing as what we got a second ago? You know, dy dx and y prime. So, you know, these two things are supposedly the same thing. Well, if you recall what y is actually equal to. Okay, remember that this is what y is equal to. If I take that and put it in, well, that was kind of weird. If I put that in in place of that y, okay, so let, let's do that. So dy dx, in other words, y prime. Sorry, that looks like a g, and just we'll pretend it's a y. 1 over 2 times whatever y is. Well, y is 
positive or negative square root of x plus 4. Well, now do they look the same? I mean, they're not written in exactly the same form, but it's that idea. Okay? All right, so implicit differentiation, doing the derivative implicitly, is that idea where I'm going to take the derivative, just going kind of term by term, piece by piece, and anywhere I do a derivative involving y, by the chain rule, I'm going to multiply by dy dx. All right, let, let's do another one. I tell you it's magic. All right, so we're going to do uh, like the same idea. We're going to find dy dx. Okay, so we're going to go through x cubed plus y cubed equals 18xy and go term by term, uh, piece by piece, and find the derivative. Okay, so here we go. Derivative of x squared or x cubed, I'm sorry, is 3x squared. And that's already with respect to x, so I'm good. Derivative of y cubed, yep, 3y squared. But I'm really, this was the derivative with respect to y. I need to do multiply this by the derivative of y with respect to x. So again, symbolically, what just happened was I did the derivative of y cubed with respect to y, times the derivative of y with respect to x, symbolically that really is the same thing as the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. Okay, so I, I'm not going to do that every time, I just want to make sure you understand where this is coming from. Okay, now there's a whole buttload of ugliness about to happen here. And basically, because this is multiplication, I need to consider this a product. Okay, so I'm going to kind of have the 18 go with the x just because I think it's easier to keep track of what's going on. So so here we go. Uh, product rule. This is u. This is v. So the derivative of the second part, I, or I'm sorry, the second part, v, times the derivative of u. So this is going to be v u prime plus u v prime. Okay, so u prime would be just 18 plus u is 18x times the derivative of y. Well, the derivative of y is dy dx. I've done the derivative. The only issue is I need the dy dx by itself, and I, I, need, a, I need one of them. I want to have dy dx equals. So I'm going to rearrange this, and this is a must. You know, this is not something where, you know, you say, oh, cool, I don't have to simplify it. Well, I need to at least get dy dx by itself, because that's what I'm supposed to be answering. Okay, so here we go. I mean, anything with a dy dx is going to the left side. Anything without a dy dx is going to the right. Okay, so 3y squared dy dx. I'm subtracting 18x dy dx from both sides. Equals, well, I have 18y, and I want 3x squared, anything without a dy dx, to go to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 3x squared from both sides. Okay, now, again, I want dy dx by itself. That means I need a single dy dx. Well, these both have a factor of dy dx, so I'm going to factor them out. I'm going to undistribute them. So dy dx is coming out. Okay, and then the rest of it stays in. So 3y squared minus 18x equals, and this is just going to stay like it is, Okay, and then, again, the goal is get dy dx by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by this lovely other factor. So this cancels out, it divides out, it's, it's a factor of 1. Okay, and then, uh, so dy dx is all solved for now. The only other thing that I happen to notice is there is a factor of 3 in every single term. So you can only divide out common factors if they're in all of the terms. So this is going to be 6y minus x squared and y squared minus uh, 6x. I don't see an x in every single term. I don't see a y in every single term. So th this is done. Okay, now one quick little note to self. If you stopped and did this on your own, you may have made different choices about what side things went to. So it is possible that your subtraction may end up backwards. But remember, if you switch the order of subtraction, what that does 
is it it introduces a negative sign in it. In other words, like uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Well, if I switch the order of the subtraction of the numerator, then that's like a n multiplying by negative 1. And the same for the denominator. Well, negative 1 over negative 1 is just 1. That reduces out. So in other the the short version is these are the same. Okay? So dy dx is this. And you guessed it, dy dx is also this. Okay? All right, well, that, that's one example. That's another example. Okay, Let, let's, let's do maybe one more. Ta-da! All right, so what we're going to do is find the equation of the tangent line at 3, 4, for x squared plus y squared equals 25. Okay. All right, well, so what we're going to do is, well, just a reminder that to find the equation of a tangent line, it's just the equation of a line. We need a slope, and we need a point. Well, look at it. We have a point. I know you've been wondering what my point was all these years. All right, so we need this. That's good. Okay, so cool, cool beans to that. We need a slope. Well, you know by now that slope is going to be about derivative. Okay, so change in y over change in x, rate uh, rise over run, rate of change, blah blah blah. So I'm going to find dy dx for this. Okay, so derivative of x squared, 2x. Derivative of y squared, 2y. But remember, anytime you're doing the derivative with respect to y. And when we really want to be doing with respect to x, you need a factor of dy dx. And then what I think is probably the hardest part of this problem, because, the, the, well, maybe it's not for you. This is the spot where I always make a mistake. We're, I sometimes make a mistake. We're doing the derivative with respect to x of every single term, both sides. Well, derivative of 25 is 0. Sometimes I forget to do that derivative, and so I'm making a big deal out of it so I don't forget. And so if you guys, if you might have the same kind of temptation, then here's your chance to nip it in the bud. All right, so uh, derivative of 25 is 0. Okay, remember the goal is dy dx, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And then divide both sides by 2y. Okay, so dy dx equals, now I can divide out those twos, so negative x over y. So what that means is I can find the slope anywhere I want for this equation, for any x and y value, and it's based on both x and y. Now, previous to this, we're used to, you know, once we find a derivative and we want to know slope, we just put it in an x value. Well, this time, since it's implicit, since it's about x and y, and, and we're doing derivatives all over the place, you can basically just plug this in. So this is an x value. 4 is a y value. So the slope for this thing is just going to be the negative of its x, so negative 3, over 4. So the equation for this tangent line is going to be uh, y minus 4 equals, yep. Now you already know I'm kind of partial to point slope form. Okay, and so that's the equation of the tangent line, and, and that's it. I'm just going to spend just another minute or two to talk about what just happened. Okay, so this is supposedly the tangent line at 3, 4. For x squared plus y squared equals 25. Well, the, my question to you is, what's that? Oh, here in the tap, tap, tap. That's a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 5. And if I go to that point 3, 4, it's right about here. And if I draw in the tangent line here, well, looky there. That is that tangent line. Okay. All right, so that's what we just found. Uh, you could be asked to find the equation of a normal line, which normal... Uh, if you were asked, this wasn't asked. Uh, uh, just remember that it's the same point. It's just the slope has to be to make it perpendicular, so the opposite reciprocal. Okay. Again, you were not asked for that at, for this problem, but I know the the classwork and homework problems probably will. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Um, nothing real major here. Uh, just want you to notice I am under 15 minutes.